One potentially stressful part of planning and preparing for a cruise is knowing and understanding the cruise line dress codes, especially today as they are ever changing. In this video, I'm going to share with you the mistakes that you absolutely want to avoid and the tips that you need to know. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, if you are preparing and packing for a cruise, I know that you're thinking about what outfits to wear, what you need to pack, what you should leave at home. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you the cruise outfit mistakes that people have made on a cruise, as well as the cruise dress code mistakes, well, that you want to avoid making. And most important, I'm gonna share with you some quick tips that are going to make it so much easier as you pack and get ready for your cruise. Now, before I get started, I wanted to mention two things. Firstly, please take everything that I say in this video with a grain of salt. And in the end, you do you. And secondly, if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Number one mistake when it comes to the cruise line dress codes is men forgetting or choosing not to pack any pants for their cruise. Now, depending on where you may live, Perhaps you wear shorts to nice restaurants in the evening time, but on most cruise lines, they have a rule that you're not allowed to go into the main dining room or even sometimes the specialty restaurants when you are wearing shorts. Now, in some cases they have a rule, but they don't necessarily enforce it, but many cruise lines do enforce it. And on a recent cruise that we did, they had a pretty big and obvious sign indicating what was not allowed in the dining room at night. Now, I wouldn't want you to be turned away from the main dining room and asked to go change into a pair of pants and not have any in your cabin. So men, bring at least one pair of pants just in case on a cruise. Number two, assuming that jeans are not allowed in the main dining room at night. Now, most cruise lines allow jeans these days to be worn in the main dining room and in the specialty restaurants. Now, oftentimes what is stated is that they should be clean. I think that that's something obvious and as well that they shouldn't be ripped or tattered or torn. So try to make sure that you do wear nice jeans. And it's a good idea if there may be a dark blue or black, they really can go with everything. And this is for men and women alike. Number three, not understanding the cruise line dress codes. Now every cruise line is different. So do make sure that you do take a look on your cruise line website to make sure that you understand their dress code. However, the typical dress codes for most cruise lines are casual, smart casual, and then you will have formal or a version of formal. Now generally casual and smart casual are pretty much almost the same. You could wear jeans, you could wear a nice shirt, like a shirt with a collar for men. For ladies, it can be pants, it can be capri pants, it could be a nice top, it could be a summer dress or a long sleeve dress. So really it is very open-ended and I like to think of it as what I might wear to a restaurant in the evening. Now when it comes to formal night, as it's called on some cruise lines or elegant night, or even evening chic nights. This is not to be confused with black tie formal because most cruise lines are not black tie formal anymore. Now, I think a lot of people get stressed out about what to wear on those formal nights and don't. Now you can definitely dress nice for men. This can include a tuxedo if you want, but it can also include a suit, a sports jacket, a pair of dress pants and a shirt even without a tie. And for ladies, this can include a long dress like an evening gown, a more casual long dress, a cocktail dress, a pantsuit, and even a nice pair of pants and a sparkly top. Now, when it comes to what's appropriate for formal night and even the other nights in the main dining room, I will share my thoughts on this towards the end of the video. Number four, and I think that this is a faux pas in general on vacation, but is wearing any graphic t-shirts that have political messages or anything that's offensive. And my understanding is if you go to Disney World and you're wearing these type of t-shirts that you can actually be asked to take them off. Now, I don't believe that they're gonna do that if you are on a cruise. However, that is something that you definitely don't wanna do. You don't wanna offend your fellow passengers. Number five, now, even if you're on a Caribbean or on a hot weather cruise, it's something that you cannot do and you cannot wear in the main dining room and in the specialty restaurants in the evening in particular is that you cannot wear any swimwear. So even like a bathing suit with a cover up, you can't wear that to the dining room in the evening time as well. You cannot, I think this is pretty obvious, but you cannot go in in bare feet. 
and tank tops aren't allowed either. Now, by the way, I should mention that if you are going to the dining room for breakfast, that you can wear shorts and a tank top and a pair of flip-flops, you will be okay with that. But if you are wearing a bathing suit, make sure that you are putting clothing over it. Number six, now this is a little bit of a fun mistake. It is not being prepared for any theme nights that you might have on your cruise. Now every cruise is different, but on some cruise lines, you're going to have some theme nights, for instance, on MSE, and on Azamara, you'll have these white night parties. I usually bring a white outfit just in case because I have seen them on other cruise lines as well. Now in Royal Caribbean, you'll have a 70s night party. It's completely optional to dress up, but some people do and they have a lot of fun with it. And you might also wanna bring a Hawaiian shirt or a tropical looking outfit for any of those Caribbean deck parties. Number seven, now this is potentially a big mistake and it really isn't on the cruise itself, but it has to do with the cruise ports. Now I have mentioned this one before, but I know not everybody has seen every one of my videos. So it is to not wear camouflage in certain cruise ports. And actually in many of the Caribbean cruise ports of call, it is illegal to wear any camouflage if you're not in active military. So don't wear that because you can actually be returned to the cruise ship and even fined. Number eight, ladies, these are a couple of things not to do for you and what to do. So ladies, make sure that you do remember to bring something to cover your shoulders. Like this is a dress that I might wear for formal night or a chic evening or an elegant evening, but I'll always bring a light sweater or maybe a shawl or a scarf just in case, because sometimes the air conditioning is very cool in the dining room and even around the rest of the ship. And something else to do is don't forget to bring an evening bag or a clutch to keep your lip gloss or your lipstick and your cruise card and any other items that you wanna keep with you in the evening. Make sure that you do have that and make sure to bring a tote bag for any port days as well. Now, by the way, if you are preparing for your cruise and want to keep organized, I do have the Ultimate Cruise Planner. Now, the Ultimate Cruise Planner is a 47 page downloadable printable planner that you can print out the pages that you need for every cruise that you go on. It includes cruise outfit planning forms, cruise packing forms, and more. If you're interested in what's included in the Ultimate Cruise Planner, I'm gonna leave all of the information linked down below in the description of this video. Number nine mistake, and this one is for the men, it is forgetting to bring at least one shirt that has a collar. So you might be very casual on your cruise. You might wanna just wear a t-shirt. However, something to note is even on more casual cruise lines, sometimes they can ask for people to be wearing a collared shirt in some of the specialty restaurants or even the dining room. So that basically means sort of a polo style shirt. It doesn't have to be something fancy or expensive, but make sure that you do have at least one. Now, my husband likes to pack probably at least about three or four because they can be worn uh, to the restaurants and dining room in the evening, but they can be worn in the cruise ports of call as well. Now I have a total of 13 and we are now on number 10. Parents, this is very important. Do not stress out about what your kids and teens are wearing on the cruise. The dress codes are really there as a guideline and they are on the most part really not strictly enforced and in particular for children. So do not stress out, do not blow a fortune on getting outfits for the kids. The only thing that I would say is make sure that you have an outfit for the day and an outfit for the evening because kids get dirty. So you do wanna have something clean. Number 11, I think that this is a mistake that many of us make and it is assuming that the cruise lines that are more expensive, those luxury cruise lines are actually more formal. Now, in a lot of cases, it's actually the opposite. They have much more relaxed dress codes. And while people dress nicely, they are not dressing formally. Now, this includes Viking and Oceana where the dress code is resort style or country club casual. Now, by the way, if you've ever cruised with those cruise lines or any of the luxury cruise lines, or if you'd want to, please let me know what you think about those dress codes. Number 12 mistake that many cruisers make is not researching not only their cruise line dress code on their website, but also what they should be wearing based on the itinerary that they are going to go. So of course, because of weather, but also in terms of culture. And as an example, if you go on a cruise to Alaska, people will dress more casually, more comfortable, if you will, more warmly, of course, not only for their ports and their excursions, but generally on the ship as well. And that is a difference from Caribbean cruises and Mediterranean cruises and so on. Number 13, now this might be the biggest mistake, because it has the potential to actually kind of ruin your cruise. And this is expecting others to dress the way you want 
them to dress. Now, of course, there are cruise line dress codes, and I think on the most part, people do try to follow them, but something to remember is that your version of dressy might be casual to someone, and your version of casual might be dressy to someone else. Different generations also have different styles, so younger people might dress in a different way, and they may feel very dressed up, and of course, even vice versa. Now, I hope that this video was both helpful and fun. I am going to leave the information about the LifeWall Cruise Ultimate Planner linked down below in the description of this video. And I would love to hear from you. What are some of the cruise line dress code mistakes or even cruise outfit mistakes that you might have made or you've seen other people make? Please let me know down in the comments below. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.